creek channel through here really is kind of silvered in. Okay. And this is silvered in. That was a branch. The river channel goes way up around. And up in here you got like like in here's here's a pocket in here that's uh I think that's 14 foot. And it's kind of silvered in. Yeah. Out in here it gets real shallow again. This would be like six. This would be nine foot at dead ends. Okay, here's uh, probably six foot, and this here is probably two foot. There's a slot right there. You can anchor the bolt here, and you can cast all the way across that slot to any hump, or you can anchor on any one of these humps and cast that slot. And that's just for the channel. It's all hard, and it's right on that bar right there. And there is a creek channel that come through there that come off the other one. And this is the only hole left from it. And those are little yeah. islands along that. I didn't know about that. But. Now what is that, John? That's a reservoir, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. But there's so much stuff in there to look for. Similar to that? What, why, do you, why do you think those, where, is the end? where do those humps come right from? Here? I mean, yeah, it's way away from the no, channel. No, no, no. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's when it when it doles it, it's right. Yeah, that's right construction. Here. Right here. Okay. That's gotta see, be from construction. The, the other yeah. channel come off from here, one around and one around that, and left that long slide there. It ain't the river channel, but it, it's, it's the main. It's Mono Lake now, right? Yeah. Mono Lake, you caught some nice nice yeah. pike today. Yeah, I was gonna give away my favorite spot. Uh oh, there you go. Boy, I love that spot. I don't even know that lake, and I showed Don a hot spot. <laughs> you don't even know how good you are, do you, Mike? I don't even know where I'm at right now. <laughs> Where'd you get those? Got them in Hess. Hess, Hess yeah. Lake, all right. What size? Uh, 250s and 200s, right? 200s? Yeah. Boy, how many bass? Speed trolling, eight bass. Eight. Norm thought we had nine, but... How big uh, bass go? Oh, uh, I don't know. We never... We just kept throwing them in the live well and taking them back off. Biggest is so, probably big not three. over three pounds. Yeah. Okay, nice shy. fish. Speed trolling, 14 miles an hour. You were you were going fast? Oh, we were flying. Oh, yeah, we're flying. We're almost up on plane. No kidding. <laughs> I'll be yeah. darn nice. That. That's, so in other words, that's a shallow, sharp right rake line, right? Yeah. So the fish are coming what to the base and then moving into the yeah. cove? Yeah, you know the bass might use might use this bar out here, the inside of the bar. But those northerns, hey, they're right there. They hit that 16 foot break line, and they can travel that. They can travel that whole cove. You got a perfect break line, but you got a little finger right here. Just past that, you got a nice little inside cut. And all you had, all you had to do was just get just out, out off from that finger, just as slow as you can go, just trickle that little puffle once in a while, and they pick them right up. So they were pretty shallow. Yeah, we couldn't get them cast in it. No, they were in 12, 14 foot. Oh, okay. But they were, they were barely there was a spot and barely barely. I moving. see. Okay. And, and over on this side where he come out, uh, we had a couple there. But northerns, you know, bug don't have the size on a large mouth bass, but northerns hit a brake line and they're predators. They'll, they'll roam that brake line. They'll run a brake line for a long way. Yeah. And, uh, have you ever caught fish inside of that cove on the inside turn when they're moving good or? Yeah. Not on me, he had a double line right there almost. The same what is that, Mike? What happens is when you make that turn, oh. when you make that turn, yeah. the guy on the inside is slowing down. His lure's dead. When his lure stops and he gets a fish, that fish just told you what speed they were. Yeah, that's right. And and then you just go back and you keep duplicating it. But we could have had nothing cast them, but they were dead slow, you know, almost zero. Hmm. And, and we had some good fish on there too. Well Jack, tell them how you catch them. He, he was throwing line back. He said. Oh, here, here, here's another thing. Today, those fish are so dormant that back they were back active, back. but they were slow. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack and Jim fished together. Jim run wire. Jack run uh, no bull. 
Jack had on a lot of line way back, and, and Jack caught all the northern they caught because of that long line, and there's something that the, the northern can see in the water too. And when you got it, when you're that far back, that that's why they're picking it up. But I was running a long line today, and I was getting more than Dave was. Did you have a hard time with that structure situation, or is it fairly broad? That is it a big feature there? It's it, it's tight. The, this this finger right here is about the size of a hood on a pickup truck. Oh man! Got <laughs> a little knob right here, a little inside turn right there. Thank you very much, Mary Don. That's where me and you get that double on is right here. Yeah. That's where we got most of our northern that day, right there. See with those doors. The northerns, well, when they come up, they're, they're going to run that brake line. They can move up to something else. But when they're cruising that brake line, sometimes you don't know where they're going to be. Is it possible there's two, where he just pointed out where that fish, where they caught those fish, is it possible there's two schools in there, move one from the bar or and one from the area you're talking about? Or do you think they're moving around that whole cold there? That wouldn't... Well, uh, I'll put it to you this way. We can take a pond at home in the winter time. It's an acre and a half pond. We can put tip-ups on the brake line at 12 foot all the way around the pond. And when the pike become active, yeah. you can watch one tip-up go up, another, another, <laughs> another, another. They will circle that whole pond. Wow. wow. And huh. I'm sure, I think those northerns, when they come into an area like that, yeah. and they become active, that they can run that whole brake line and they, they do some weird stuff, you know. That's what you, yeah. That whole lake's a school in Northerns. <laughs> and then you go there after you get good stable weather, after a week, you can't catch a Northern. You go in there and you'll catch walleyes in four foot of water, smallies in four foot of water. You won't find a Northern nowhere. <laughs> you can't even buy one. Hey, it's not how it is tearing up. Neither one of us know what we're doing. <laughs> 120, 150 feet. They have three, four colors, just way back with a smaller lure. Yeah. And sometimes that, that's what it takes. This is a smaller lure. 250? <laughs> yeah. Here's 12, here's 12, here's 13, here's 14, here's 14. You're looking at a foot to two foot difference. Mm -hmm. All you do a little slats. Keep zigzagging all the way through. Every time you hit a fish, throw a marker, drop anchor, cast. They quit, start trolling again. Hit another fish, drop an anchor, cast. You just keep doing that, and you'll follow those schools back and forth in those slides, and they just keep going and going and going. There's got there's got to be thousands and thousands of giant smallmouths in there. And, and the walleyes, those walleyes. They're in the slots also, but you got to find a hard shit around the slots. They ain't going to move up unless it's hard. And all these humps of that dumping ground, over here where the, okay, here you got the Livingston Channel coming out. Yeah. Are you in Canadian water here? No. Here's the Livingston Channel. You got. You got, you got humps, you got humps out here, and one comes up to 10, I think one's 14, there's another one back here that's 10. There are humps right along the channel. All these bass fishermen are beating the shit out of all that stuff. Those humps right there, you just go out there, drop anchor, and wait on them and load the boat. I mean, there ain't nothing to it, you know, it's stupid. There's so many fish out there, it's unreal. And uh, me and Jim Williams, last, last fall we was down there, no, that was, uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, John and Ted Wallers were down there, and they had one bass and a walleye or something. We found a, we found a hump would come out, and here's 12 foot. Here's 16 foot. Right here, 
it broke. Here, this one down to 14. Right here, it went from 16 to 14. We were just running at 16 foot, the slot. It went from 16 to 14, just like that. Just a little two foot flip. Jim had a fish on it. Threw a marker out, one back, investigated it. Here's a 12 foot hump. Right on top of that 12 foot hump, there's a, they come up the tongue. There's a sunken boat on it. We put a marker right there and got working around and we anchored this way so the current was taking us down and cast that. We caught like 40, 50 bass. Wow. It's a big one. Yeah, a big small <laughs> mouth, you know. Up, you know, up to six pounds. Wow. And it was cast after cast <laughs> after cast <laughs> oh. until you, they were just tired of tearing you out. Every time when we lose them, we move down here and anchor. And we pick them up again. And then we move over here and we pick them up again. And we just kept them going like that for about three hours. <laughs> How long was it before Bales talked to you? When we, 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 <laughs> when we come in ashore and uh, and Bale says, you doing any good? And I said, yeah, we got a live wolf full. And he says, what? <laughs> I said, didn't you do any good? He said, let's see. And I started throwing out a live wall, you know. <laughs> what, what, what the speed was, when you casted it out, you left a weight for about a count of three, and you moved it three, four inches. Wow. And that was it. What time of the year was this, Jeff? That was that, three weeks ago, Jim? About a month ago. So that water was pretty chilly still then. And you, well, that was a difference, huh? Yeah, speed. You you moved it three, four inches after you left the set. You caught one in a jig in its mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Are you using a <laughs> swim plug or a blue bait? Just, just jigs, just wet jigs. It's, it's, it's too deep for spoon plugs. You can't cast a spoon plug when you're anchored, you know, you know that deep very good. Yeah. Yeah. Seven yeah. Current. But, you know, the, this this is the same situation right. where, where you got a brake line going to a different spot and you know, the fish aren't smart, you know, they're, they're pretty stupid. They're saying the size alligators don't like to eat jigs. <laughs> it's like, you know, you gotta, get, you gotta give them what they want, and, uh, and you got them. I guess I, I'd like to know where that's at. Uh, is that out from, the, uh, um, out from uh, Erie yeah, Metro? Or, uh, where those homes are in that? Yeah. Metro Park. So put it in Metro Park and uh, take a right and uh, just haul ash right around where you see 12 foot and just keep going until it drops and find those slots. There's a lot of slots out there. Okay. You come instead of, instead of going um, <coughs> up the river, you're, you're making a right and going out out towards the lake. Yep. As soon as you leave Erie Metro, and you're finding those lots out there. About four miles out. Four yeah, five about, miles out. Four or five miles. Yeah. yeah. Five and a half miles. Yeah. Rusty's gone on his GPS. Yeah. yeah. Five point three of those to at home. Is that uh, down the river or up the river? Oh, all the way. On the lake. When you take off, look, uh, let's take a theoretical fishing situation. Because I'm trying to picture this. I mean, four or five miles, that's a long way. Yeah. And, and you really need a GPS to find those spots okay. out there. Oh, well, we got land, land, yeah. land side. Well, we don't you, use you it. You get in the, in the boat. That's why we got the walleye. I mean, the walleye small is we couldn't find it again. Are you, are you running lures from the time you you leave the dock, or are you, are, no. are you just are you looking? Go to the spot and fish it. Or look for a spot when you get out there by the channel and start looking around. Go out there and get around. after them in that spot. Here, here's that bar on the left side out of White Lake when you go in. You got, here's a channel, out here there's another big bar out here, you got 50 foot, out here you got 48 foot, 
Here's a, here's your brake lines. You got 12, a 16, 24, 30, and a 36. That's your brake lines. Your 30 to 36 is pretty quick, all the way across it. After 36, it goes right down to like 44, 45. Those fish on this bar make contact way up here, way up here next to shore. That's where they make contact. If they make contact at 36, they might move to here. They might move up here to 24. Somehow they always end up around 24. Those fish will come way out on this bar at 24. And they'll, they'll run that 24, 22, 24, all the way along here. The fish in this side is right, right here you got 48 foot. Also, they move there, they do the same thing. You'll hit them on that whole bar. You think there ain't nothing there, you run straight out from there and watch that sucker go to 48 foot after you hit 36. I mean, it's right now. And this right here, those fish don't have no business on the end of this bar because where the end of that bar is is a big flat. But guess what? It's a 36 foot brake line. Those fish can hit that brake line, come all the way around here, pop up a 30 foot, and there might be a little finger or something in here to put them at 24. But the fish don't have to move up from the deep water to the bar. They can move up right there. You're looking at a couple hundred yards. They can move up all the way up here and take that brake line all the way out. Me and Mike Doran last year, remember all those pike we killed over there? And we was catching them all the way down to 36 to 42 foot. But there's so much area that they, they can move up in. They'll move in way up here and way over at the other side. But out here, there's nothing for them to move up on. There, there ain't nothing there. But the thing is, when you're running a bar, don't just troll the bar. Run up, drop a marker 10 foot run off the end of it, or run off the size of it, see where the deep water is, get a shoreline sighting from your marker, or the deep water side from your marker is, and then run off it straight and see where your brake lines are. If you got a brake line of 16 foot and you think, God, that's a nice brake line, it don't mean a fish moved up there, unless the deep water is right there and there's something there to bring them up to it. The deep water could be way off to the side. But that 16 foot could run all the way around the bar. A fish won't swim uphill and go down again, but a lot of times on those bars, it's not. It'll run the same all the way around. It could, that brake line could start here, 36 foot, and actually run uphill, or be 38 down there and run uphill to 36. Fish will run when it's level. When they become inactive, if you're getting them in here at 22, 24 foot, and all of a sudden they quit, they can move out here. You can be fishing 26, 28 foot of water, and you'll see all those fish suspended at 24. All that's telling you, when they become active, poof, they're right into 24. But it's the same thing with those humps of Lake Fury. That brake line, that, that brake line is magic, man. You, you run a brake line, and you figure out where that brake line goes, and you hit a big fish, and find out why he was there. Yeah, I think I think you just uh, said the statement that uh, Buck emphasizes. When you understand why they're there, then you know where to follow that brake line. In other words, you're looking at the feature and making a complete interpretation from where the migration starts yep. to understanding interpretation, yep. especially on bigger bodies of water. Yeah, you got you got to know what they're following. Yeah, and and Lake Erie, another thing down there, you got a muck line just like you got in Florida, except the texture of the bottom and these big flats may be soft or hard, but one thing, they hold zebra mussels. Clay will hold zebra mussels. Muck won't. If it's just muck and there ain't nothing there, and there's clay, the zebra mussels are on the clay. They gather on there. You got brake lines out there that run for miles. 
And all those zebra mussels are clinging to that clay, and that's all that is.